So we're starting a new build now, and uh, this build is actually going to be entirely made from spare parts we had lying around the uh, workshop. So we've got our body here, uh, well not yet, but it's uh, this is a piece of poplar, so we're going to be using that for the body. And we have this bass guitar neck uh, lying around that we're going to use. And it's uh, not in too bad condition, uh, we're probably going to re-fret it, there's a few uh, worn frets on it. We've also got a string tree uh, screw stuck inside. So we may have to remove that, or we may end up painting over the headstock, we haven't decided yet. But other than that, all spare parts we had, we had tuners, we had string trays, we've got the neck bolts, we've got strap buttons, we had a spare pickup, we had a brand new base bridge we haven't used, we've got some controls and an output jack. So that's pretty much all the parts we're going to need. Um, the only thing we don't have is a base uh, template to uh, form the body on. Well, when I say base, I mean a P-base template. But what we do have is, we've got the template from the uh, bass guitar we made for uh, Bren Lina. So we're going to shape it the same way, just to keep things nice and simple. And we've got plenty of spare uh, spray paint as well, so we're probably aiming for a yellow colour we think. And that's pretty much everything we're going to need for the build, and we're hoping this will be a quick build. Not as many parts as some of our other series. So we're instantly going to get cracking now and we'll start to shape up the uh, body. So we're going to start off by marking out our body shape. And because we're going to be painting this and because it's poplar, we're not particularly worried about how the grain is going to look or anything like that. So we're just uh, on our center line, just marking the first half. So we can just draw around this very quickly and crudely. This is just to give us an idea of what the shape will be. And we want our other piece, because it's perfectly symmetrical, can go here, and again just on our center line, very roughly, just to give us an idea. So that's our two halves marked out. We're going to cut down the center here. And then we'll bring these two parts together and glue them, and we'll have our body blank uh, ready to go. So we've just marked out our body shape here. And again on the far side. So what we'll do is we'll slice the wood down the centre here. And then we can swing this piece around here. So this surface will be gluing to this surface, and we'll have a large body blank uh, ready to go. So that's our two uh, halves of the body blank cut, and we're just getting ready now to glue them together. Uh, we've already got a factory edge on uh, both sides here, so uh, we should get a nice clean uh, glue up. So we're just going to get all our clamps and stuff ready now, and we'll get this glued together. So just getting ready for a pretty standard glue up. Just going to put some glue on both surfaces, uh, put the pieces down, and then set to clamp everything together. So this should go together uh, relatively quick, hopefully. Nice uh, spread on this glue. Make sure we've got the entire surface uh, covered and catching any drips as much as we can. So we've got a good amount of glue on uh, both surfaces. So as you said, we'll just flatten down our pieces. 
and we'll just slide them back and forth slightly to uh, let the glue start to bite on itself and then we'll just start to tighten up our clamps just initially just to hold everything together and we can just start coming back with our other clamps and we get everything nicely tightened up then So that's our body bank uh, glued up and uh, so we've got some pieces on the end to keep things nice and straight as well as our bar clamps across so we're going to leave that overnight and uh, we'll come back to it tomorrow and we'll move on to uh, taking a look at the neck so moving on to our neck now as you said we're going to end up refretting this uh, more than likely lower yeah, no, we will end up refretting it. And uh, a couple of other things we're going to have to do. We're going to reshape the headstock uh, ever so slightly. Not too drastic. We're just going to change some of these angles. And the most important thing is as well, we've got a lovely set of uh, wall tuners here. But the problem is that the holes are far too large for them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug up uh, these four holes with a large dowel. And then we'll flatten all those off and we'll re-drill our holes then in the centre. Uh, for these uh, tuners. So that's going to be the first things we're going to do is we'll get these holes plugged and then we'll come back and do the rest of the operations. So we've just cut out some various different uh, size plugs there uh, just to get this uh, get those holes filled and so we're just putting some uh, glue on this uh, last one here and we'll just get that in and then we're just using some sawdust on that just to help uh, fill up uh, the edges around it. So you can see we're a reasonably uh, tight fit on the front there, uh, but we've got quite a gap on the back here. So we'll pour in some sawdust and uh, some glue and we'll get that uh, hole filled. So just with that hole, we're just throwing in some sawdust. And then we'll put on some glue as well and we'll let that sink down in. And just kind of mix everything up to create like a paste that will fill in that uh, those gaps so with that done we'll uh, just wipe off all this uh, excess and we'll let that uh, let the glue dry and then we'll come back and we'll smooth out the entire surface so it's the next day and we're just going to very quickly uh, take the clamps off so we just have our F clamps on the end here that we were using to keep everything uh, nice and straight and flat and we just had some packing tape on them as well just to stop it sticking uh. that's our body blank all glued up uh, just some glue squeeze out the stuff to remove and again more glue on the far side to uh, take off but that's us started anyway and um, so we've left this glue to dry uh, overnight so we're gonna come back now and we're just gonna use a flush cut saw and we're just gonna cut down uh, the bulk off these uh, plugs here and then we'll sand it all nice and flush and then we'll assess where we are then So that's our tuners installed and everything tightened up and fits well. So that's those taken care of. Uh, we were going to refret this neck, but we're not going to now. We're just going to do a complete fret job on it. They're actually in quite good condition and I'd rather not rip them out unnecessarily. So we'll move on and we'll do a fret job next and then we'll just do a general clean up on the rest of the neck. So we've given the body a quick sand and we've just uh, redrawn on our template here. Uh, just to see what we're working with and we've now got a neck template in a uh, place here just so we can work out the exact position of the neck so we've uh, we've already got some screw holes in the back of this neck but we're going to be filling them and we'll be re-drilling our own so we're just working out uh, that we have enough of the neck uh, inside uh, connecting 
and just about there should be fine. So we'll be able to draw around that and get ready to start out routing that out. But also while we have this in place we'll be able to work out our full scale and work out exactly where our bridge is going to go. So that's the next thing we're going to do is we'll get our long ruler out and we'll work out and mark vaguely, roughly, where our bridge position is going to be. So we've got our neck just roughly held in position there. Um, we've still got our template on the body in that and we're just using our large ruler here. Uh, we can mark from the nut, uh, work out what our 12th fret is going to be and then double that to give us our scale length. So we're going to be 34 inches. So we can just uh, take our pencil and we can roughly mark uh, where 34 inches is going to be. Now this won't be precise at all but it will just uh, give us a good idea of where the bridge is going to go. So we we'll can make our other calculations uh, roughly based off that. So we're at 34 inch scale length. We've got our 17 inches at our 12th fret. So we can take all this off now and we can get ready to start routing out our neck pocket. So we're just getting ready to uh, hog away some of this material out of the neck pocket to uh, give the router a little less work to do. So we're just using our Forstner bit here and we're just marking out um, exactly where we can drill down to take away as much material as possible uh, using a couple of uh, different sizes of a uh, Forstner bit. And that'll just mean that with most of the material gone the router just really has to hug the, uh, the side walls and just clean out the uh, area rather than to be trying to take away too much material. So we'll just head it over to the drill press now and we'll start to take away all this material. So that's our neck pocket, uh, all routed out, and so the neck goes in, okay, not too tight, not too loose. So uh, now that we've got that done, we can uh, reattach our template, or sorry, re-put our template in place, uh, just to get everything lined up on our center line. And we've got our mark here for where our pickup is, cavity is going to be, and so we've got a center line for that, so we can roughly mark that on both sides. And then we'll just draw a line across here, and then we'll be able to mark out where our pickup is going to go. So we're just getting ready now to drill out our uh, pickup cavity, and we're using some templates here. And this is a two-part system from Stumac. So we've got a bunch of holes here, and um, some are one eighth inch diameter, some are a sixteenth. And basically, by drilling all these, we get to drill out those tight corners that make up the pickup cavity, as well as our pickup mounting screws and as well as two other holes as well for uh, some dowel pins that will hold a second template in place. So we're just going to drill down to start with, uh, with our 8 uh, inch bit and so we're drilling out a series of holes here and as I said these will make up the corners of our pickup cavity because it will be way too hard to try and get a router cutter to cut in something so tight. So we'll just drill these out now and then we'll take this piece off and then attach our second template. So with the first template taken off, you can see we've got a series of holes here now. So we can now take two uh, index pins here that come with the set and we put them in the upper and lower corners. We can then take our second template and we use these to align that. So those uh, pins tell us exactly where this template needs to go. So we can just again use some double stick tape and just hold that template down in place and we can then start to route out all this area in here. So now we've got our second template on, you can see where we've drilled these holes earlier that it's actually gone right into the corner there in those really tight areas that's going to be difficult to get to. So we can uh, put our router on now and just slowly start to go down and just uh, take away all this material here. Uh, the reason we're not drilling in advance is because we're going down such a short amount so we'll be able to just do this with the router nice and easy just taking a handy until we get down to our final depth.
So that's our uh, pickup cavity uh, all routed out and looking nice and clean. And um, so next we're going to move on to our control cavity, and that's just going to go here, but it'll obviously be on the back. So just using our uh, template here, and we've just got it lined up and uh, nicely where we want it. And obviously um, we'll be drilling this from the back, so we need to place this template in exactly this position, but on the other side. So we've just drawn around uh, the square here, and we're going to trace those lines all the way around onto the back, and then reposition it on the back, and then get ready to start uh, drilling out and routing. So as I said, we've drawn these lines here, so we're just going to carry those lines over the edge, and we'll just use a square and that, and we'll get this all transferred onto the back. So we've marked out where our control cavity is going to go on the back and um, so as usual then with it marked out we're going to take our Forstner bits and we're going to drill out as much of the material as we can to give the router uh, less work to do. So just the usual we'll mark out, drill down and hog away as much of this material as we can. So luckily we stopped ourselves before we did any drilling or anything serious and we realised that it's actually this inner part of the uh, template that we use to go all the way down and um, the other part is just a small shelf for the cavity cover so we're marking out this now and uh, we'll take away all the material in here and then uh, come back, route it all and then get ready to route just a small shelf for the control cavity cover to sit on so as we said we'll mark this out and then just hog away all the material So we've reattached our internal uh, template here and we've just got two screws holding it in place and these are screw holes that we'll be using to hold in the uh, cavity cover anyway so there's no problem there and they're just below the surface so they won't interfere with the router and as usual we've got our router bit here with a bearing on it and the bearing will follow the template around and start to cut out that material then we can take the template off and then use what we've cut out as our new template to keep going down to get to the thickness that we require so we'll just start routing that out now and we'll bring you back uh, after all the routing is done. Uh, so forgot to turn the camera on but that's our second template in place and we've just cut out a small little shelf around here that our control uh, cavity cover plate will sit into. So we can take this template off now and that will pretty much be all of our routing done except for obviously the body shape but that's all our cavities taken care of and their pickup cavity done and our neck pocket as well so what we have to do next is we'll cut out the body shape shape that and we're almost on our way so just a quick recap on where we are with our cavities we've got our neck pocket uh, done we've got our pickup uh, cavity done and on the back we've got our control cavity done and our lip as well for our cover plate. So that's the bulk of it done as we said. So what we'll have to do next is uh, go to the bandsaw, cut out our body shape and then we'll use our router as well to finalise the body shape and we'll almost be there.
So that's our body uh, off the bandsaw now, and you can see we've got it uh, roughly shaped out now. And see what the final instrument will look like. So what we'll do next is we'll uh, reattach our template, and then we'll route around to get our final body shape. So we've reattached our template, and we're just getting ready to route out the body. And we're just starting with these upper horns here. We're going to do them first, and because they get so narrow, there's very little for the router to sit on to stay flat. So we've just got a piece of poplar, which is an off cuff from the body here, and a piece of MDF, which is the same thickness of the template. And we're just using that to give the router some stability, so it can get around these uh, tight corners here. So we're going to route out that part first. Uh, we'll switch over and route out this part, and then we'll be able to route out the rest of the body. So we've uh, routed out the upper half of the body and we've established their uh, outline here. So we're going to set up our router table now and we'll do the uh, bottom half of the body. Okay, so we've got our body all completely flushed up now, and while we still have the router table set up, we've just put in our round over a bit, and we're going to do a round over on the top and the bottom of the body. So we'll just fly through that now really quickly. So that's our body done on the router table now, we've got our round over done. So we've got a bit of sanding to do, but the only other jobs we have left to do are to fit the neck, uh, work out our bridge position, and drill our two control holes. Uh, also have to do our output jack, but other than that, the body is almost uh, completely done. So we'll just press on ahead now. So as we said, the body is uh, almost done, we just have a couple of more holes to drill. Uh, we're going to be drilling from the pickup cavity into the control cavity and we're also going to be drilling where our uh, bridge ground is going to go but we're not going to drill that just yet until we have our uh, bridge uh, completely marked out its position and we can work out where to put the ground then and then we also have to drill out two holes for our controls as well as our output jack so to begin with we're just going to drill this force hole here from our pickup cavity into our control cavity and we've just got our extra long drill bit here this is an aircraft grade one, so we've just got the drill at the end and then it's smooth all the way so it shouldn't cut up the body or anything like that. And this should be a relatively straightforward drill. So that's done now, so we can move on. So we're just marking out now where our two controls are going to go. So we just made a few measurements in that, uh, just to get them both uh, nicely centred and even. So we're going to put the two of those there. So we just made two small marks here, and we're just going to go ahead and just put a little uh, indentation for the drill bit to uh, dig into, and then we'll drill down through now. So before we get on to our painting and final finishing, uh, we're just going to work out our bridge position and so we can get the screw holes for that drilled and we can also drill our ground wire once we have that position sorted. So we've just got our ruler on uh, here in place 
and we've just got our 12th fret uh, mark here and we double that then and that gives us our full scale length which is uh, 34 inches so we've just got our bridge uh, pretty much centered here and just on the 34 as well so uh, we can just use our center line here as well just to get things uh, properly centered but we're just going to run to uh, base strings uh, two old strings and we've just put in two tuners here and we'll just get that up uh, reasonably to tension and uh, we'll just work out exact uh, side to side position to make sure our strings aren't overhanging either side so we'll just throw those strings on now and get that lined up so we've just got our bridge here and we've got our center line marked and we've also got where our scale length is as we said our 34 so this might be very difficult to see but we're just holding that on there and we're just lining up uh, our string along our nut up here uh, just making sure we're not overhanging on the edge and doing the same on the other end so we're absolutely perfect there and just judging the bridge here we're directly on the center line and nice and parallel and square so with that in place we can then mark our screw holes and get ready to drill those holes in so we've got our holes here uh, for our bridge uh, screws and you can see we're going right down the center line so we're nice and centered and we're nice and square here as well so we can just line up our bridge there again just with all these holes and you can see we're nice and square with this uh, parallel line here at the front or perpendicular line sorry and again we're nice and square on the center so we can drill those holes now and we'll attach our bridge and just put on our two outside strings then just to doubly make sure everything is perfect So we've got our two uh, outer strings on now and we've got our alignment absolutely fine so uh, that all lines up perfectly so we can now dismantle everything and get ready for painting and finishing. So to begin our finish we're going to start with our neck here and we're going to spray the front of the headstock and the back and we're going to give it something of like a stinger kind of on the back just to hide all the battle scars and uh, holes that we filled in etc and that. So we're just going to get this hung up in our spray boot and we're just going to spray a coat of primer on it just to see how it's looking and that and we've taped off uh, the rest of most of the rest of the neck and we'll see how that's working out and then we'll get ready to start spraying primer on our body so we'll start with this headstock first So that's our body all primed now and we're getting ready to paint and we're going to be using this uh, metallic blue uh, kind of a sparkly uh, finish to it as well so it should look quite nice and if you can hear some noise in the background it's because we've got plenty of heaters on at the moment as we're still in the middle of winter here in Ireland at the moment so the air is way too cold uh, to be spraying so we've got some heaters on to try and warm the air up because uh, if it's too cold as we try and spray this paint uh, some of the paint itself can actually dry uh, mid-air before it actually makes contact with the body and give us an absolutely horrible finish 
So as we said, we're trying to warm up the air with several heaters. And we're also going to be placing the cans into a little uh, container here with some uh, lukewarm water in it just to get the paint warmed up as well. So we're going to do all that, uh, get everything prepped and we'll start to spray some finish then. So just before we do our clear coat on our body and our headstock, uh, we're just going to put on our headstock decal. And this is just one we've made ourselves. Uh, you can buy a decal paper online. Uh, just print on it with an inkjet printer and then some lacquer over the top and you're good to go. So we're just going to put this in some lukewarm water for a few seconds to loosen up the paper backing. And then we can slide it into place. Uh, we're going to brush on some uh, decal setting solution that you can buy in any uh, model shop. So we'll just do that. Slide our decal on and then we'll pat it down dry, maybe rub some more of the setting solution on it to soften it slightly. And then once that's nice and dry then we'll be able to do our clear coat on top and we'll do the body at the same time. So we'll just press on ahead now with this. So we've just taken the mask and tape off there on the neck and we're looking nice and uh, as we said uh, because this uh, we're reusing this neck and uh, we've just given it a quick fret job and uh, oiled up the fretboard and that and the same with the back just cleaned it up and done some oiling so our neck is pretty much uh, ready to go so we'll uh, take a look at the body now and we'll start to uh, assemble the instrument. Um, so we're just moving on to our final assembly and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use this copper uh, tape and copper foil and we're going to shield the uh, control cavity on the back here as well as the pickup cavity on the front there and we'll also shield the back of the uh, control cavity cover and this just helps stop uh, noise interference and that getting in so we'll just cut out some various shapes and stuff and get them pressed in and just completely seal the whole lot 
the on the back of the air cavity control cover as well. So we'll just press on ahead with that now. So that's our copper tape installed and we've done the back of the control cavity cover as well. So that all seals up nicely. So now we'll move on again and we'll start to install uh, the rest of our parts. So that's our pickup installed now and we've just run the wires through. So next we're going to run our ground wire through, put our bridge in place and then we'll start to wire up all our electronics and our output jack etc. So we've just pushed our ground wire through the body into the uh, control cavity and we just leave a small amount sticking above the surface and we just fray out the wires slightly so when we secure our bridge in place it makes good contact with it and grounds the bridge so we can just screw our bridge in place now and then move on to our electronics so we've just very quickly wired up the instrument uh, just pretty much a basic p base uh, kind of setup so as I said we just ran through it very quickly and it all seems to work and we've left a lot of slack on all the cables uh, just because we're probably going to might change this again in the future or if the instrument moves on we might put in a different pickup etc so we're just leaving things uh, so they can be updated or changed uh, in the near future so we'll move on now and we'll get the rest of the instrument assembled so we've just reinstalled our tuners and we've also put on our string tree and we've left a lot of uh, slack in that so we can move it to make sure it aligns correctly and we've just put on our uh, control knobs here uh, some nice uh, abalone tipped ones which look quite nice and so next what we're going to do is we'll connect the neck back to the body and then we'll string her up so we're just putting in our neck bolts now and once we have that done we'll uh, flip the instrument back over and we'll string it so we'll bring it back right now at the very end when the uh, instrument is strung up and all ready to go and so here we have the instrument uh, completely finished and we still have a setup and that to do on it but other than that she's completely done we've got our sparkly headstock and our Branco logo and we cleaned up and we did a fret job on our neck we've got our sparkly finish black pickup our abalone uh, controls our bridge we've got a small blemish in the finish here that we may touch up um, afterwards we'll just flip it over to show you the back We've got our bolts and ferrules as opposed to a neck plate, which I much prefer. We've got our black uh, control cavity cover plate, our blue sparkly finish, and we cleaned and oiled the neck. And we've got our stinger on the back of the neck here, and our new tuners. So that is the instrument uh, completely done. That's the end of uh, this base uh, build series and we'll be starting our new series soon.